Japan undergoing massive yen devaluation. Why is this? First off, we're going to go into yield curve control. They've been doing that since 2016. But what's different is bond villagantes have actually come into the market and been and been fighting the JCB. Basically, uh, we saw they've been capping rates at 25 basis points. But a few days ago, these bond sellers basically drove it up to over 45 basis points. The important of that is uh, Japan has over 250% debt to GDP. That is very, very hard to come back from. And it's one of the massive reason one of i'd say the main reason why they've been going under massive deflationary and disinflationary pressures for the past 40 years we have not really seen any inflation from them and i suspect those trends are going to continue just what i found interesting over the past week has been the yen to usd rate where you saw a plummet that is the yen crash vis-a-vis -vis the dollar bounce back, but then seems to have stabilized for the time being. An initial takeaway for myself is affirmation of Brent Johnson's dollar milkshake theory. If Japanese firms have debt that's denominated in USD and they need USD to service it and they have to exchange yen in order to get USD, a falling yen means that they will have to spend more yen to get the same USD to service the same USD denominated debt payments they have. Or there's some other option where, you know, the default renegotiate or whatever, but that's a whole nother, you know, different bag of worms. One could foresee a positive feedback loop where more and more yen are having to be exchanged for the same amount of dollars in order to service the dollar denominated debt that Japanese firms have, which, for, which puts further pressure on the exchange rate, meaning even more yen have to be exchanged in the future. The problem's not gonna get better, it's gonna get worse. Yeah, I don't think that's the main reason why the yen's actually dropping right now. Everybody has been talking about a drop in the yen right now, but they've been doing because they've been doing this yield curve control, but they've been doing this for the past five years. So what is different now the, the I'd say the two main things is one, uh, everyone says the dollar is the cleanest shirt, but I would say right now the yen is the dirtiest of dirty shirts. And that's because their central bank is the most dovish. All other central banks that you can think of are raising rates. They're trying to fight inflation. Japan's doing the complete opposite. Since their debt is so drastically high, they need to keep rates historically low and capped. So because of that, I think people are going to be artificially selling the yen just because they are the, the most dovish central bank in the world. Therefore, I think that is going to put more pressure, as Justin was just saying, on the dollar milkshake theory, causing a, a, a negative feedback loop. How far is the yen going to collapse? Because I see people saying that the yen is absolutely done for. But let's actually go into the plumbing of this yield curve control. Right now, the, the Japanese bank is actually just printing bank reserves, just like the Fed does. And that is just doing an asset swap with banks. How is that actually going to get into the real economy where consumers, non-bank entities like you and me are going to be uh, having more yen, which they can then go spend on goods and services. It doesn't. No new yen are being created in this process. It's simply an asset swap between financial institutions and the, the Japanese central bank. Therefore, it is not going to be actually causing consumer price inflation. So I think there will be a time when the yen catches a floor and they'll, they'll no longer be the dirtiest of dirty shirts because all other central banks, I think, are going to reverse course. And when they do, and, and when we're no longer raising rates, when we cut rates back down to zero, when we start doing QE and infinity, I can see us doing yield curve control. But in addition to that, we will also be doing stimulus checks and actually uh, printing real dollars and putting them into the system. Then I think the yen could actually catch a bid. That is how things are right now, though, because we aren't seeing the the, the government of, of the Japan actually doing any stimulus checks. We don't see them giving any loan forgiveness, making the banks loan. And without that, we will not see consumer price inflation in Japan. And actually, what's interesting, too, is that, I mean, you could also argue that this is, you know, a flavor or perhaps maybe the initial stages of Triffin's dilemma playing out. If the Fed is oriented towards stopping inflation domestically here in the United States, theoretically, you would need interest rates to go up. Or that's that would be the argument they would do. And probably, if you look at what they said this past week, the 75 basis point and then the ongoing guidance of 75 basis points increase seems to suggest that's what, assuming nothing changes changes what they're what they're going for in that regard but it also shows that what's going on in domestically in the united states the monetary policy that we need here isn't necessarily the monetary policy that works worldwide in this case you know with the yen and them having to service uh, usd to not usd denominated debt but again like you have this concept where you have the world reserve currency functioning as the local unit of account here in the states and it's almost like you know a man can't serve two masters you know and so you're having to choose between one or the other just me this question, besides the yen, if the yen's running into trouble, what do you think the other big currencies that might run into trouble this way are too? That is, if higher interest rates in the United States serve to put pressure on the yen, do you see that happening anywhere else? Yeah, I think that's going to happen worldwide. 
and it's just kind of starting in Japan because people are selling it uncontrollably because their central bank is so ridiculously dovish. But as Brent Johnson kind of predicts, when the dollar goes up against other currencies, it sucks everything else with it. And but the reason is, I mean, you have to just you you have to understand how banks create money and how servicing that debt is then extremely deflationary. And when the dollar continues to go up, it starts with the yen. If if the euro starts to go up against when the dollar is increasing in value, people have to sell more of their currency to get more dollars. And that causes a negative feedback loop spiraling out of control. Eventually, that's going to end. But as of right now, that is going to continue to happen until it doesn't. But it is happening because that's the way the system works. It doesn't matter how you want the system to work. This is how the system actually works. One one bold prediction that I am going to make is I, I think the yen's going to, to get it's going to get crushed pretty bad, but I, it's going to find a floor just like uh, yield curve control has its problems, but it's going to find a floor. And when it does, I think uh, other central banks are also going to reverse course when the US starts to reverse course and we, we are no longer tightening and we start easing again when the ECB does the same thing when all all central banks realize oh shit we're going into a recession we need a reverse course I think the yen is actually going to be one of the first to catch a bid because we're going to we're, we're in a situation where right now the yen is the dirtiest of dirty shirts but I think they're going to be one of the first in the laundry mat once once all other central banks starting to be more dovish as well that's a much yeah. much much longer term view and I'm not trading around it in any way it's just more of a thought abstraction that I have in my head. Yeah, the other thing I would also add too is that, at least from the United States side, and I know this is this kind of goes beyond the realm of economics, but it's probably worth note, noting too. We have an election coming up later this year, and granted, it's an off-cycle election. So in other words, I, I, I don't think that's applicable. No, no, but hear me out. Hear me out, because the thing is, is that if you say that you know they're going to reverse course and do quantitative easing, that would I would assume that would mean the Fed's given up on trying to seriously fight inflation, and if the Fed gives up on seriously trying to fight inflation, that's something that would reverberate into the election season. Now you can make it's a whole other bag of worms. I'm not trying to go there to say, okay, well, listen, how political is the Fed, and what's the tie-in between all of that? When I look at the probabilities. I wouldn't assign a high probability yet to the Fed reversing course on fighting inflation. And if they're not going to do that, you're not going to see quantitative easing from the Fed. Not yet. I, I, I'm, not looking, yet. I'm, not I'm yet. looking at a few years, personally. So will Japan's yield curve control be successful? Will they give in to the market? As of right now, it does not look like it. Today, they're going further and further and buying absolute every single bond. Will they ever give up and just let the market win? I don't know. That's for you to decide.